Let's we'll jump over to step number five. So I've been doing this a while, candidly, and dealing with a ton of technicians. This is typically one of the hardest things for technicians to bite off on. So the upfront agreement basically does two things. One, it acknowledges why we're here, and then it also lets them know what we're going to be able to do today. The way it's phrased, or the way it comes across when done poorly, could be reason why technicians don't really like this. Because they feel like it puts Mrs. Jones in, a, in an awkward position, where it makes her feel like she's being sold. But I would say, this step has to be done well, and it has to be done. Because if this step is not done, step six when you do a total comfort diagnosis, step seven when you come back and recommend as an expert, it all falls apart unless this is being done well. So I want to give an example. This might not be verbatim or word for word, but basically what's going to happen is after we find out what frustrates Mrs. Jones, ask leading or logical questions at the thermostat in step four, we step into this upfront agreement. Upfront agreement sounds something like this. Mrs. Jones, now I'm going to go and look at what's broken today and make sure we do whatever we can to get that taken care of. While I'm here, I'm also going to look at anything that might make your system more comfortable, work more efficiently, be more reliable, or, or be more safe. If I find anything, do you want me to go ahead and take care of that? Or do you want me to bring it back to you and ask what your thoughts are before I do anything? Now let me ask you guys this. Do we do anything without Mrs. Jones first being educated and giving us the okay. We're never going to do anything without her okay. Yeah, everybody's good with that, right? So then somebody would say, well, why do we ask the question that way? Well, the reason is it's called an alternative of choice question. If I said, Mrs. Jones, I'm gonna go fix what's broken and I'm gonna look for anything that's make your home more comfort, efficiency, reliable, and safe, do you want me to present you with those options or not? What are we giving her as an option to say? To not present no, anything. No, well, I don't yeah. want you to present anything. And sometimes customers might want to stick their head in the ground. But what we do is we give them alternative of choice. And I want you guys to hear the way I present it. If we know, if we not just spent two minutes, but 20 minutes getting to know, getting to ask, getting to find what's going on, ask leading and logical. You see how this is one part of a recipe wherein if we take it out, it ruins the whole rest of it. If they know us, like us, and trust us, we say something very simply like, Mrs. Jones, I'm going to go work on what's broken today and do whatever we can to get it taken care of. While I'm here, though, I want to make sure that we look at anything that can make your system more comfortable, make it run more reliably, work safer for you, and be more efficient. If I find anything, you want me to go ahead and take care of it or to come back and ask you about it. Does that come across as trying to upsell somebody, as trying to force feed somebody, or trying to pin somebody into a position? It doesn't, does it? No. Mm -mm. What they have to understand is that you're doing it for them, not for you. Now, why this is so important is if I don't do step number five. If all I say is, Mrs. Jones, would you like a UV light and interesting about your daughter and temperature swings in step four, and then say, great, I'm disappearing for a couple of minutes, and then I skip step five altogether, and I come back in step six. Mrs. Jones, I did a total comfort diagnosis. Step seven, this is what I found. If you've truly done a comfort diagnosis, you've probably found reasons that it broke today that need to be assessed and fixed. You probably found solutions to the temperature swings and the UV filtration and all that stuff, but if you haven't done step five and then you come back and present solutions that she hasn't given the, you the okay for, what are you doing at that point? You're doing Selling exactly sold, what yeah. you're scared of doing by not doing step five, which is making her feel sold. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is huge. If all you do is disappear, come back and say, Mrs. Jones, just to fix it, it's 200 bucks, but based on everything that I went and took my own choice to show for you and try to show you what builds value, it's gonna be $1,400, you're out of there. She doesn't like you, she doesn't trust you, she thinks you're trying to upsell her. Extremely important that we do this and do it well because that sets the table for us after we do everything to come back and present options. Now, Mrs. Jones, again, I'm skipping ahead here. Mrs. Jones, we found out not only what's broken, but you told me about those temperature swings that you were having. One of the things we found was that this mercury thermostat, it's really not reliable anymore. You said it was really important that we fix that today, and then you get into the solution. That only works if in step five, we allow her to know that we're not just fixing what's broken, but looking to benefit her with comfort, efficiency, reliability, and safety.